Hello everyone, my will discuss the, um, the organization of the neurons and then we talk about some neuroglial um, cells. So basically just the histology of the nervous system. So um, we are going to look at the organs of the nervous system, the structure of neurons and the neuroglial um, cells. And neural tissue contains two types of cells. You have the neurons. These are the cells that actually send and receive signals. And we have neuroglial cells, which are support cells that mainly protect the neuron. So those are the two cells that we shall encounter in the neural tissue. Then the organs of the neural, of the nervous system. So the nervous system is divided into two, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system contains blood and the spinal cord, sorry, brain and the spinal cord, while the peripheral nervous system contains the nerves. So the nerves from the uh, brain will be called cranial nerves and from the spinal cord, they are called the spinal nerves. So cranial nerves and spinal nerves uh, components of the peripheral nervous system. Um, we have other organs of the nervous system that include sensory receptors, especially within the sensory organs. So like the retina of the eyes, you have the vestibular apparatus in the, and the um, organ of cortia in the ear. So all those are also part of the sensory receptors that are connected to the nervous system. So nervous system has central nervous and peripheral nervous. Peripheral nervous is divided into somatic nervous system to the skin and skeletal muscles and autonomic nervous system to the smooth muscles, cardiac muscles and glands. Autonomic nervous system is divided into sympathetic system in how the body responds to um, fright or flight and parasympathetic system. These are the responses when the body is at rest. So the neurons are usually um, the basic structural and functional units of the nervous system and they have a cell body and this cell body has a nucleus with a nucleolus and it also has other um, organelles like the mitochondria and the nasal bodies. Nasal bodies are rough endoplasmic reticulums um, with free ribosomes. That's what we call nasal bodies. Then from the cell bodies, we usually have the dendrites. These are the dendrites. And dendrites are the receptive areas, are the ones that will receive the signals. Then the cell body, the, the signals will get to the cell body, which will interpret or integrate the signals. Then we have the axon hillock. From the axon hillock, the signal goes um, to the initial segment of the axon where transmission begins. It will be transmitted through the axon and terminate at the synaptic terminals by relaying onto another uh, neuron or relay onto an effector organ. So these are the parts of a neuron. So again, you have the receptive area that is usually stimulated by changes in the environment and that's the dendrites. Then you have the integrative area, which is the cell body that contains the um, organelles. Then you have the transmission area, uh, region, which is the axon that conducts the nerve impulse in form of action potential and the synaptic terminal that um, usually um, relays onto another neuron or an effector organ that can be a muscle or gland. So we have major organelles within the cell body. There is a large nucleus in the nucleola. There's a cytoplasm of the neuron, which you call the perikaryon. We have mitochondria that produce energy. Remember, energy is needed for the transmission of the action potential. Then we have rough endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes. Together we call nasal bodies. The ribosomes and rough endoplasmic reticulum produce proteins in form of neurotransmitters that are actually the ones that um, transmit the signals. Then we have the cytoskeleton and the nasal bodies containing rough endoplasmic reticulum and the ribosomes. The dendrites. We said that the highly branched portions, they, origin, uh, they are connected onto the cell body. So they're made up of many fine processes and that helps to increase surface area. They are the receptive portion of the neuron. They receive information from other neurons and they are responsible for 80 to 90% of the surface area of the neuron. Then um, we have the axon, which is usually long. And this is a transmitted portion that carries electrons electrical signal in form of action potential to the target. 
and the structure of the um, axon is usually critical to its function. So we have an axon hillock. This is the thick section of the cell body that usually attaches onto the initial segment of the axon. This, in, from the initial segment, so from the axon hillock, you have the initial segment. Then you have collaterals. These are just branches of a single axon. And at the end of the axon, you have a synaptic terminal that contains knobs. And these knobs are the tips of the axon. So at the synaptic terminal, you have a presynaptic membrane and a postsynaptic membrane, and these two are separated by a synaptic cleft. So what happens at the presynaptic membrane after the information is being transmitted towards the synaptic um, um, terminal? You have the vesicles of the neurotransmitters. They will merge with the presynaptic membrane and with the presence of calcium ion exocytosis will occur and the neurotransmitters will be released into the synaptic cleft and they come and bind onto their specific receptors on the postsynaptic membrane so the synapse is an area where a neuron communicates with another cell so it could be another neuron it could be a muscle cell or an, a, an effector um, um, organ and the prenaptic cell is the one um, the neuron that actually sends the message, then postsynaptic cell is the one that receives the message. And in between the two membranes of the two cells, we have the synaptic cleft. It's just a small gap that separates the presynaptic from the postsynaptic membrane. So the area of terminal uh, containing synaptic vesicles, the terminal, uh, the area of the terminal um, nodes contain synaptic vesicles that um, usually are filled with neurotransmitters. So how do you classify neurons? There are three ways you can classify neurons structurally, functionally, and according to shape. So structurally you can have unipolar, pseudo-unipolar, bipolar, multipolar, or anaxonic. And this is based on how many extensions are arising from the cell body. So if it's only one, you call it unipolar. If it's one and then immediately branches into two, you call it pseudo unipolar. If there are two, you call the neuron bipolar. Then if you have many um, processes from the cell body, you call it multipolar. A neuron that does not have specific process from the cell body, those are anaxonic. And functionally, you can divide neurons based on um, whether they are sensory or motor. Uh, you can have interneurons that now connect a sensory neuron to a motor neuron. Then based on shape, the star-shaped ones are called stellate. Pakinje have a cell body that's flask-shaped. Pyramidal, the cell body is pyramidal in shape. Granule, they resemble granules of sand. And then you have the basket neurons. So this shows you um, structural classification of neurons, anaxonic. Then this is bipolar. You have two extensions from the cell body. This is pseudo-unipolar, pseudo-uni, falsely one pole. So from the cell body, you only have one um, structure arising from it, but immediately it divides into two. So that's why we call it pseudo-unipolar. It falsely looks like it has only one um, um, extension from the cell body. Then multipolar. Multipolar means you're having all these extension, including the the um, axon. So this is a multipolar neuron. So the anaxonic neurons are no anatomical clues to determine axons from the dendrite. So you cannot tell which one is the axon. That's why it's called anaxonic neuron, and the function is generally unknown. Multipolar. You have multiple dendrites and a single axon. That's why you call it multipolar neuron. You can tell an axon from the rest, but it also has the dendrites, and this is the most common type. The multipolar uh, neuron is the most common type, and it's found, um, for example, in the spinal cord. And then we have bipolar neurons. We have bipolar neurons where you have two processes from the cell body. One is a dendrite and one um, is the axon. And where do you find bipolar neurons? Because for all these neurons, we'll ask you where they are found. So this one is found in the retina of the eye or the sensory apparatus in the ear, like the um, organ of corti where you have the um, inner hair cells, and then the olfactory neurons in the nose. So the spatial sensory receptors are bipolar neurons. So when you're asked where do you find bipolar neurons, you'll say in the special sensory. So 
that's it about the bipolar neurons. Then we go to the pseudo unipolar. So we said pseudo means falsely unipolar. So there's a single process that comes off from the cell body, but immediately it divides into two, where one portion will give the dendrites and the other portion will form the axons. Where do we find pseudo unipolar neurons? Mainly in the dorsal root ganglion. Dorsal root ganglion is um, a collection of neuronal cell bodies, mean usually sensory, that um, their cell bodies are within the ganglion and their peripheral process is carrying sensory information from the, perif uh, the periphery and central portion enters the spinal cord through the dorsal cone. So functionally, you can have sensory neurons that transmit sensory information from the receptors of the peripheral nervous system towards the central nervous system. And most of these are usually unipolar, but a few are bipolar. Then you can have this few that are bipolar. Remember the ones I've told you, um, the special sensory receptors like for olfaction, for test in the retina, in the ear. So those are bipolar. Then motor neurons transmit motor information from the CNS to effector organs. So from the ventral horn of the spinal cord, for example, to the muscles and the glands in the periphery, those are motor neurons. So motor neurons are most of the time multipolar. Sensory neurons are unipolar, or pseudo unipolar, or bipolar. The pseudo unipolar ones are in the dorsal root ganglion. Cell bodies are in the dorsal root ganglion, while the bipolar ones are for the special receptors. Motor neurons carry motor information from CNS to effector organs, uh, which are the periphery, and these ones are usually multipolar. Then we have association interneurons that transmit information between the neurons within the CNS, and these ones usually analyze and coordinate, analyze input and coordinate output. Again, association neurons are multipolar. So sensory are pseudo unipolar or bipolar, like the bipolar are the special sensory, Motor neurons are multipolar, while association neurons are also multipolar. So this is a unipolar cell, a pseudo-unipolar cell with the dorsal root ganglion, and this is a bipolar cell in the retina or the special receptors of function test, retina, hearing. Then this is a um, motor neuron, which is a um, multipolar motor neuron of the spinal cord. This is a pyramidal cell within the um, cerebrum. You can see the pyramidal shaped cell body. And this is a Purkinje cell with a flask shaped cell body. It's found within the cerebellum. Again, these are just multipolar neurons, bipolar and pseudo unipolar. And we said input is at the dendrites, integration at the cell body and conduction is at the axon, then relay or output zone at the axonic terminals or synaptic terminals. Then we go to the neuroglial um, cells. That, that's what we'll discuss in the next um, video.